Okay. Five or 10 seconds. So, hello to the audience of Whole Round. This is Noemi Herzog here, a theater critic from Hungary. Um, and as I'm a, an old follower of Roma Heroes Festival, and I cooperated a lot uh, with Independent Theater Hungary, who we have today in today's panel, I will uh, moderate today's discussion. And I am lucky to introduce you the participants of today's conversation. Um, we have here Mihaela Dragan, an actress, play playwright, and director who lives and works in Bucharest, in Romania, and also in Berlin, Germany. In 2014, she founded Jublipan Theater Company in collaboration with other Roma actresses, a revolutionary theater, according to writers. Jublipan's performances have a feminist agenda. Uh, we have Sebastiano Spinella here, a polyhedric artist from Italy, as his work, interest, and research touches various disciplines, his nearly 40 years of experience in theater includes puppet theater, street performance, horse drum, circus, commedia dell'arte, prose theater, activist theater, anthropological theater, sensorial theater, and social theater. We have Rodrigo Balog from Hungary, founder and director of Independent Theater Hungary, he is a writer, director, and initiator of the Roma Heroes Festival, and writer and director of many plays and shows. His theater company, I would, li I would like to say, a little land of normality in Hungary, where Roma and non-Roma artists work together. And finally, but not least, Marton Illés, who is the operative leader of the Independent Theater Hungary, a sociologist, dramaturg, and educator, and also an interpreter in our present conversation. Martin has been also involved in Roma Heroes Festival as, in, as an initiator and organizer, and we will also talk about shows today he has been involved in. Um, so during this week, uh, the audience of Horand could see the sixth edition of Roma Heroes Festival. We could see many plays, we could shows, um, all of which Roma self-representations, and we could read articles uh, related to the topic of self-representation self in uh, Roma theater. And um, as today we have this conversation with four remarkable Roma artists and theater makers from different countries, um, um, I would like to start with saying uh, just a line about the Roma community that is uh, actually the largest ethnic minority in uh, the European Union, in Europe, often marginalized and face discriminations, just like today and in previous centuries. So my first question to you, um, what does Roma theater actually mean to you? And why do you think that Roma self-representation matters, if you think that, um, and should be distinguished from theater in general? Whoever feels like the start. Maybe, maybe as Marcy is still translating. Um, uh, okay, I can start. Great, thanks. Hi, Hi hello everyone. Nice to, nice to see you and to meet you. <laughs> uh, so what does uh, Roma theater matters? And if it can be seen as a specific category, if I well understood the sec yeah the second part of the question, um, I think like every every minority theater matters in the context that we live in societies where we learn Eurocentrism and where we learn that our art is less us because the standards of what is real art were set it by the holders of power. So like the the fact that we as a community we were marginalized, this had effects on our culture and arts too. And this is why it's important for us to 
occupy spaces and be visible and yes, represent our community. Um, regarding the second question, I don't know why I feel I don't I don't feel good when I hear every time when I hear if if Roma theater should be seen differently or it should be put it in a different category. Like I have this uh, feeling that the people uh, try to put us in the boxes that why should be different. You know, it's theater. It's theater about Roma people, and we feel and we play and we move the same. And this makes me feel. This made me remember of my racist theater teacher that she always used to say, like, um, Roma can't be actors because the way in which they move, speak is different than us and is different by the aesthetical representation on the stage. And this was profoundly racist, you know? And because like, we, we really breathe the same, talk the same. <laughs> and I feel that uh, uh, people trying to put us in different boxes like Roma theater is social theater or like uh, artivism or whatever, I think is their attempt to to leave us in marginality when actually our theater is is valuable, <laughs> is high quality many times, and is the way in which theater should be seen. is progressive, is contemporary. Uh, yeah, it's what it should be called theater. It's how theater should be, like responsible, how we try to do it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so Rodrigo also agrees with Mihaela. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> hogy valóban a, a roma közösségek látható bátétele egy színházi előadáson keresztül, az, az megerősítő hatással bír a saját közösségeinkre nézve. Uh, so being visible, Roma communities on the stage during a performance can empower the community members. És jó esetben uh, szemléletformáló hatással van a többségi társadalmakra nézve. And in good case, it can also uh, raise awareness of the majority regarding Roma people. Uh, annyiban, annyiban is egyetértek Mihályilával, hogy a színház a színház. And I also agree with Mihaela that theater is theater. Tehát, hogy egy színházi alkotáson keresztül nekem vagy... Uh, kiszáll a torkom és kiízra a tenyerem, vagy nem. So, either my uh, throat becomes sorrow and, and I got sweat and cry or, or not. And it's... Uh, és, hogy, és hogy azt gondolom, hogy, hogy, hogy egy ilyen alkotás az etikai tartalmak nélkül is kell, hogy hasson. And such a, a, such a product should also have an impact without ethnic content. Na de én roma emberként úgy mégis miről csináljak színházi előadást az eszkimok nem életéről? But me as a roma person, what should I uh, do a performance about the sexual life of eskimo people? Én or... valóan semmi közöm hozzá. Of course I have nothing to do with that. Legalábbis az eszkimó részéhez. Or at least to the part of eskimos. <laughs> Nyilvánvalóan a saját, a saját kihívásaimról, a saját értékeimről tudok előadásokat csinálni. So I can do performance about my own uh, uh, challenges and uh, value stories. Ha ez roma, akkor roma, ha LMBTQ, ZHY, akkor az, és még soha. If it's roma, it's roma, it's, uh, it's LGBTQ, ZH, then it's that. Nekem sokkal kevesebb gondom van a a fiúkokba helyezéssel, meg a, meg a címkézésekkel. I don't have too much problem with being put in boxes or getting uh, some kind of uh, as, like labels on us. Pontosan tudom, hogy így, tudom én, akár a, a tágabb szakmai közösségem, ami általában egy cigány rendezőnek nevez engem. I also know that my professional community names me as a, as a gypsy director. De én pontosan tudom, hogy milyen, milyen örömök és milyen, milyen kihívások azok, amik működtetik az én, az én szakmai létezésemet a munkatársaimmal. But as I'm, I'm aware that what are the joys and challenges of working with my colleagues. És én inkább erre koncentrálom. I, I concentrate on that, and not so much of this external uh, putting boxes issues. Thank you, Rodrigo. Thank you so much. Sebastian. 
Yeah. Yeah, well, I have a, 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 link, a longer story about how I came to do theater. I have to thank a lot the meeting I had with the Independent Theater and Jubilee Pan. I am very thankful and grateful to them all. Uh, because in the beginning, I started working with uh, uh, pre adolescent from, uh, from the um, communities, Roma communities here in Rome, there are a lot of slums and camps where still uh, Roma people are closed in. And uh, I started doing very light uh, 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 activities like uh, uh, circus skills and music uh, for children. So I, I did not have any intention of doing uh, theater in the professional uh, meaning. Uh, just wanted to give them a chance to have a, a, a good time, you know, living in so bad conditions. It was very nice for them to, to have these uh, moments a uh, couple of times a week uh, to have fun and learn things also me uh, teaching music to the Roma community it was quite something for me. And uh, it was just after the invitation in the festival uh, uh, in Budapest by Independent and the meeting with Michaela and all of them that participated that I started taking uh, serious the, the, uh, the possibility to do theater. And uh, I was very lucky to have uh, uh, um, older, young, young uh, adults that joined me into the into this project, and they are and they became very good actor in very very short time. And uh, this is doing something; is making a change in the mind of these people, of these young people and their families, and also in the surrounding. Uh, um, in the professional area of theater in Rome, we are the first Roma theater company in uh, in Rome, maybe in Italy, and uh, it's uh, it's going. It starts a long way. Thank you. So. It seems you have slightly different opinions about uh, the boxes or labels about Roma theater, but you also agree on a lot of things. But still, Roma theater, uh, Roma Heroes Festival is uh, using this label, and it's actually the sixth edition, which we celebrated last year at the end of last year. So it's a lot of time that passed since the um, first such festival was organized. Um, actually, it's the first international Roma festival in the European Union. There was one in Kosovo before, but in the European Union, it's the first one. And since then, there was one such festival also in Bucharest and also in Rome. So I'd like to ask you to reflect on what's your opinion, what has changed in these six years, if any, and um, also what needs still an improvement. So what do you think, what are the next steps for, also for the festival and also maybe you as an artist, what's the difference between um, the roles of um, theater for you or the, for the festival, um, maybe if it's anything, any different from, from the start compared to the start. Hát ugye hat év telt el, és ugye volt hat fesztivál, pontosabban igen, tehát nyom, nem hét év alatt hat fesztivál. So in seven years we, we made the six festivals. És azt gondolom, hogy, hogy most van az a pont, amikor egy kicsit meg kell állni, és levegőt kell venni. So now we should also stop for a second and get some new fresh air. Érdemes egy kicsit újra gondolni, hogy mit miért csinálunk. To think a bit about what we are doing, why we are doing that. És hogyan. And how. Uh, az, az bizonyos, hogy, hogy azért azt is hozzá kell tenni, hogy Kassán és Prágában is volt már ezen a néven, a Roma Hősök néven fesztivál. So there was also with the same name festivals in Kosice, in Slovakia. Bécsben. 
and in uh, Prague and also other theater Roman theater festival in Vienna. Tehát, hogyha van, ha van bármilyen boldogság ebben, akkor azt talán az, hogy, hogy egyrészt ezt nem csak mi csináljuk. So this is what if we have some happiness in it that it it also became like uh, in other European uh, countries. Hanem, hanem az európai pályatársak is fontosnak tartják. But also other European Roma artists and organization thinks that it's important. Uh, az bizonyos, hogy hogy most uh, jutott el a hazai Roma hősök fesztivál odáig, amikor tényleg érdemes egy kicsit uh, kiértékelni, annál is inkább mert uh, mert most már azt tudjuk, hogy képesek vagyunk arra, hogy megtöltsünk egy, egy kamara színháznak a nézőterét az előadásokkal. So we should also evaluate it, because already we have uh, results, like there is like bigger audience to who can like make full uh, theater rooms. De nekem például nagyon, nagyon egyéb más kérdéseim is lennének ennek kapcsán, hogy például azok a nézők, akik akik, akik az érkező előadásokat megtekintették, ők például jegyet váltanak-e más színházak, akár többségi színházak előadásaira is. So it's also a question for me that the audience members who come, do they also go to the uh, performances of, of majority theaters? Tehát, hogy tényleg őszintén kíváncsi vagyok arra, hogy, hogy ennek van egy generátor hatása, és hogy ezzel jól jár a többségi színház is. So I'm also interested if we re- really like generate new audiences. Uh, Sok igen és ehhez hasonló kérdésem van még. I have a lot of questions like that. És azt gondolom, hogy mindaddig, amíg, amíg ezekre nem kapok választ, addig, addig, addig tényleg egy kicsit álljunk meg ezzel. És nem véletlenül terveztük a következő fesztivált 2025 végére. So we should now do a small stop, and that's why we plan the next festival only in 2025. We need to add back here. Sorry. Okay. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. Beside that, I would like to add also that there is also a big uh, professional development, which we can see in the six editions that at the beginning it was only monodramas and storytellings, and now there are also uh, like bigger performances more professional performances more spectacular performances and also uh, as as rodrigo mentioned that uh, the audience got like more diverse so there are already like a lot of uh, roma audience members who who go to performance and not only as a as a member of a group but as Uh, active citizens who decide to go to theater, who want to buy a ticket, who want to see their stories on the on the stage, and and we think it's a very important uh, process of uh, empowerment as well. So um, when you say you need to wait a little bit before the next festival, you also mean that you have certain answers for how much this festival can have an effect on the majority theater or that you need to think about that during that time and um, just to find ways how it could be reached or or you just need to find out if it's happening already. I just, maybe I didn't get it precisely. Hogy, hogy akkor vált, hogy van-e már elképzelés, hogy hogyan, vagy még csak a kérdéseket vehetjük? Egyelőre kérdésfelvetésnél tartunk. Uh, so now it's the time of uh, collecting questions and, and later on getting answers, but it's not uh, figured out exactly. Hát ez ugyanolyan, mint bármilyen, bármilyen gyártási folyamatnál egy, egy olyan időszak, amikor, amikor a kiértékelés időszaka megtörtént. Történik, és egy picit végig gondolod, hogy, hogy eddig mit csináltál és hogyan, a, mindezt azért, hogy tudd, hogy a jövőben mit csinálsz, és azt, hogy fogod csinálni. So when you do any kind of productive things, that sometimes it's nice to stop and evaluate and reflect before uh, making new plans and, and develop it in the future and not to do just uh, by routine. Okay, so um, Mihaela Sebastiano, um, as there were some festivals in 
Bucharest and Rome too. Do you think that those will be organized again? And and also the question is the same to you as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure we we are trying to 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 reorganize. Maybe this year it will be a, a bit smaller version than last year, but uh, we are trying to, and we are asked to, and that is what is important. And is that uh... sorry, yeah. Uh, what is important is that uh, the city is asking us to do it. N well, not in a mainstream uh, level, but. Uh, uh, we have uh, come in touch with uh, with what is the local uh, theater uh, um, theater uh, clique in here in Rome, and we've been invited also to small uh, city festivals, and uh, coming out a little bit of this uh, thing of the ethno theater, but more as a theater, uh, and this is this is very important for me. Uh, and um, yeah, we will try for sure to to reorganize uh, version this year, and for sure next year it will be. Mm -hmm. Great to hear. Uh, in Bucharest, unfortunately, I don't have a positive answer, <laughs> like uh, Sebastiano, and like for this year at least, I think we'll not organize it because it. Last year it was our first edition and we were still learning. We didn't have the experience that independent theater from Hungary has in organizing. So I think we we made some some mistakes in the way in the period period when we fixed the festival. Um, and I feel like when I think back now about your festivals, like I feel that like in Budapest or in Rome, you have different contexts in the way that in I like I like it very much that in Budapest, Roma Heroes Festival was was growing from the first edition, as you said, because I remember I was there at the first edition. And like now at the sixth edition, like I felt that everything has changed, the space, the audience, I saw Roma community, I saw an international English community or like a diaspora community coming to your festival. I felt that all these six years, you know, uh, had the power to move audiences, like they heard about the festival, they were curious, they were there everywhere, like the mainstream press in Hungary was interested about the festival, you know, it, it wasn't something uh, new, like people knew about the festival. And uh, I felt that you have been working a lot in all these years in order to bring the festival at this level. And um, in uh, Rome, I like it because it was uh, it was a community space. It was a squad where you organized the festival. And this was amazing because they were in the squad. There were people all over the world, refugees, minorities, people, exactly the audience that we try to reach, you know, our target. And I felt like it, it has so much meaning to perform there. Uh, meanwhile, in Bucharest, when we organized it, I felt that it was our own bubble, the bubble that usually is coming to our Jubilee Pen shows and many, like some, like, I saw that they came somehow to the to our shows more than to the other people's shows from abroad because, I don't know, they don't have this curiosity or whatever. I was disappointed. I mean, this is the truth. I would like to say that, you know, the audience from Romania is more prepared or like more interested but no <laughs> no i understand maybe maybe in years um also um uh, <laughs> um this creative euro project which uh the festival belongs to uh, also gave opportunity to create shows and we could actually see those during the festival and um, also online on whole run this week uh, earlier and um, let's just talk a little bit about those shows uh, particularly uh, 
Um, actually, there were two shows viral on TikTok by Yumi Ayala and, and uh, Romnia by Yu Sebastiano, where in both of the cases we find certain feminist criticism towards the Roma communities. Um, we find, um, which is which doesn't happen for the first time for Mihaela. Um, in this particular case, it's uh, this show is about the lack of sexual education in Romania and particularly in um, the Roma communities. Whereas in Romnia, we find a young woman who has a conversation with her mother, and she does not really get support for her. Um, desire to be not only a wife but something else as well and um, I'm really interested in your opinion uh, if um, about such criticism in uh, in theater if this can lead or not lead to the negative status of Roma community uh, do you think it's a danger or not if not why and um, maybe uh, another question related to that who do you think at this point your audience is? And if you can tell us anything about the reception of these two shows uh, locally, mostly. Whoever would like to see that. Maybe Mihaela, you are very, I think you don't really get this question for the first time, probably. Uh, yeah. Um like i don't i don't think it's self criticism i think you know roma community is part of a society that you know is misogynistic maybe or lacks edu sexual education so i don't see like i i've made like a criticism to the roma community and i tried to give them a lesson or something like that i think i just talk about some issues um, with whom specifically Roma girls are, are confronting these issues and I try to make it relevant not, uh, not only for Roma community but also for Romanian society and not only for Roma girls or teenagers but also for their parents and you can't avoid, you know, to sometimes to be interpreted as you make a self criticism of your own community or something, you know, is like it's an intersectional perspective, and an intersectional perspective is no, it's the anti racist perspective, but it's also like the, you know, the female perspective, the women perspective, the LGBT perspective, perspective, and so on, and then <laughs> you have to to make, you know, to to mirror all this in an honest way, to mirror all these uh, realities of our community. And regarding the reception, um, yeah, I think like, I feel like the reception was good. It was an intense show for many teenagers and many parents and I always notice <laughs> And I really like this, that sometimes the parents come to the show with their youngsters, with their kids that they are, I don't know, 15, 16, 17. And many times uh, it's like an informed show, not only for teenagers, but also for parents. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, Romnia. Uh, in the beginning, I, what I wanted uh, it was to make a, a theater performance uh, that would speak uh, to the female component of the of the Roma community here that uh, I experience here in Rome. Uh, in their role of uh, you know they they have a lot of uh, of pressure on top of them, not only giving birth to their kids, but also taking care of the families. And they often have to carry the load of troubles uh, um, caused by men. Uh, but uh, it, uh, it's changed slightly on the way uh, while we researched for that, also due to the, to the, um, to the actress that I, I met and worked with. Uh, because uh, we found this different different 
view on life, um, you see there is a three, three, two, um, uh, two uh, ages of women that speaks to each other. The older one that talks about memories and and expectation that never were met, and a young young woman that is. Uh, 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 not wanting to become a wife and just do the life of a servant of the house and also uh, related to the, all the uh, today's uh, discussions about gender and all this so it was quite interesting because uh, we we came to touch and also kind of create a, a bridge between old generation and new generations. And also to have this story of uh, this uh, non-Roma uh, woman that uh, decide to live uh, together, uh, uh, that marry a Roma uh, man and decide to live in the community, which is also a very interesting story because we can watch at uh, life uh, from different perspectives. Actually, you mentioned another exciting uh, parallel between uh, your show and two shows by Independent Theatre Hungary from this year's program, because um, in both of uh, these three shows, actually, uh, we see uh, marriages between the non-Roma and the Roma, and also the multiple generation comes up uh, with um, the actual feeling or the question, raising the question if it's possible to integrate into the larger society. Because in um, your piece, we have maybe a, a more optimistic tone of this, that uh, the non-Roma wom woman um, finds her place in the Roma community and in the urban life, whereas maybe the husband uh, is less successful uh, than his wife, but they still uh, kind of survive. And um, it's more or less the same uh, for um, Builders of a Country by Independent Theatre Hungary, but the focus there is maybe much more on um, the impossibility of this uh, full integration. And actually, this piece is the part is the part of a trilogy uh, by Independent Theatre Hungary. Both all the all three of them um, starts from the question of generations, rotting birds, uh, which was also presented in this year's program, raising the actual question about the possibility to uh, from coming from very low if you can uh, integrate into art life and how this can lead to a conflict with your own community, maybe your, with your own family. And um, it's a big question for each of these heroes if they can succeed or not. And then there is the third part of the trilogy, which is an older one, uh, Frog Tales. So my question is uh, here a less artistic one. Actually, it's uh, more like a question about contemporary Italy and Hungary. How do you see that in real life? Like, what's your opinion about the possibility for integration um, um, and 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 uh, and marriages between the Roma and the non-Roma uh, in the provinces and in the capital? How do you see that it's happening? It's, um, so the chances are for integration. Maybe, Sebastiano, would you like to start? Okay. To answer the question. Thank you. Yeah. You don't hear oh, yes. Uh, well, uh, if the question is about if uh, uh, integration in, in marriage, I think love is love, and that you cannot really <laughs> uh, change. Um, Integration. integration. Sorry, for, maybe I didn't. I didn't get the, the question or what. Integration of the couple into the larger society. Integration of an individual, um, maybe Roma person, into the right bigger society. So, 
definitely not. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. You were right. Well, what can I say about that? Uh, I am quite uh, um, negative on that on on that con concern because I I find it, it's very strange because uh, some some people I mean some part of the society uh, take it, especially in the suburb. You would find people that uh, that would react uh, uh, well on and and welcome this kind of situation, but also there is a kind of uh, war between poor people that has is triggered by the kind of society we live in that makes also that uh, uh, one family mixed or Roma family that uh, try to get out of the slum and get into a popular house or something like that, uh, get tro in trouble with neighbors, you see. In, in that concern, uh, generally, I'm quite uh, not so positive. Uh, I find that uh, what as, as long as our society, the mainstream society, doesn't change in a positive way, there will be no peace. It's not, I mean, it's what I find generally, this capitalistic and uh, mainstream uh, uh, Western uh, culture imposing all over the place uh, is, uh, is doing this. That, uh, and it, it won't change as long as it's so injustice, so much injustice, so much uh, unheaven uh, distribution of, of of wealth and all this. I'm sorry, I'm so negative, but <laughs> this is what I think. Yeah, thank you. If there is an integration question, then I think that this in Hungary is not working. So if we speak about integration, then I think in Hungary it uh, never really functioned. Én ennek viszonylag egyszerű okát látom. Ö, nagyon nagy hangsúlyt fektettünk a társadalmi integrációs törekvésekre. Uh, we put a lot of uh, emphasis on the uh, social integration. De elfelejtettünk mögé gazdasági integrációs törekvéseket helyezni. But there was no focus on economic uh, integration or inclusion. Tehát nincs miről beszélni. So there is nothing to speak about because without economic inclusion, uh, social inclusion doesn't really function. Lokális szinteken, uh, igen, amikor mondjuk egy vegyes házasságról van szó, akkor ott valamilyen szinten persze történt integráció. So on very local level, if there is like a mixed marriage or something like that, then can, there can be some change. De ez csak a látszat. But it's only the surface. Én inkább asszimilációnak hívnám. And I wouldn't call it integration, but more like assimilation. Valamelyik bevódolt a másiknak, de teljes értékelfogadásról én, én nem so either the the non-Roma person or community be uh, assimilated to a Roma community or a Roma person assimilated to the uh, to the majority but like a mutual acceptance of values and commonalities uh, is not really what I see. Ennek ellenére mondom azt, hogy az apák és fiai trilógia három alkotása azért nem csak egy sikertelen integrációs törekvésről szól. Despite that, I can see that the three pieces of Fathers and Sons trilogy is not only about unsuccessful integration stories. Én szimplán fejlődés történetnek látom. I, I see them as development stories. Amiről meg lehet a véleményünk, de ezekről még tény marad. Uh, which we might have our opinions and critics, but it's still development. Igen, mindennek ára van. <laughs> and yes, everybody has its price. Van ára a boltban az élelmiszernek. Yeah, there is price, the food in the shop. És van ára annak, amikor jobbat akarsz önmagadnak, a családodnak, és valami nagyobb célért kezdesz el küzdeni. Igen, meg kell, hogy fizesd az árát. Időnként előfordul, hogy el kell, hogy hagyd a saját identitásodat, hogy egy kicsit háttérbe kell szorítsd. 
So, and many times when people want to reach more and give more to their families and uh, realize their their aims, then they have to uh, pay a price for that. And many times they have to put in back their own identity. Az, hogy ki mennyit fizet érte, az, az egyéni, egyéni megítélés kérdése. So, how much is the price is depending on their given individual mindannyian fizettünk és fizetünk a jövőben is we all pay and we will pay also in the future for that én erről beszélek ebben a három előadásban that's what i'm speaking about in these three uh, performances thank you rodrigo um also these performances are actually um, theater shows that that are not following evidently traditional past, but they are all contemporary pieces. Uh, uh, Mihaela, you have a multimedia um, show uh, with um, very uh, active women on the stage, a um, uh, very contemporary piece, Sebastiano. The uh, show is very interestingly mixing contemporary theater with Comedia dell'Arte, and Rodrigo, you are experimenting not even for the first time uh, with the genre invention of uh, punk opera. So um, what is your relation to traditions, both European tradition, theatre tra traditions and also Roma theatre traditions? And how do you think um, actually um, these the contemporary theatre and these traditions can be mixed? And what do you experiment with? Them? How do you experiment with them? And um, and also, I'm really interested in how your audiences accept the shows. Sebastian seems like. Thank you. If you start. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I come from uh, from so many different uh, experience with theater. A traditional theater and um, and contemporary theater how do they how how do we work with that yeah well i i you see uh, i started with, uh, with street theater yeah and i i i started a kind of circus circus uh, clowning and and uh, very free you know very free uh, open open to any suggestion uh something that would uh, in the street you have to be very straight and 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 be very uh, good at uh, uh, capture the attention and and you would do that with any <laughs> with any means uh but also the experience i had later on with theater uh, so so different so I I, uh, I I I do not uh, I do not uh, uh, take as a, a style one style I, I do I do not stick to one style I I like to 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 use anything. What is important is what the content. What is important is uh, how how you can reach the best way you can tell your story. And how you can reach, uh, uh, how you can do that the story go goes into the heart of people, because this is the most important. So, yeah, then theater as art is very interesting. And we have the story so long, there's been so much experimentation. I think we, as uh, 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 and the coming generation, we should just be free to pick from whatever and mix and experiment as much as we can. Yeah. What about you, Mihaela, maybe? So the question is, how do we mix contemporary theater with Roma tradition in the context of European <laughs> theater tradition, yeah. if I well understood? Or... Sorry? Yeah, both, traditions, which one, both traditions, and if 
if uh, both matter to you when doing theater? Uh, which one do you concentrate on more? Do you try to connect um, to any of them, of these two traditions? Yeah, so first of all, I don't know exactly what is Roma tradition, you know? Because <laughs> how can we define Roma tradition? Maybe there, you know, is a set of practices but uh, I don't know, yes, music is part of our tradition, uh, dance, folkloric dance is part of our tradition, And but I think the the way in which we use it, yeah, it's, it's contemporary. We definitely, like, I, we like very much to use music in our shows, and viral on TikTok, it's talking about, like, two young girls trying to become popular on TikTok. So they use a lot of music and choreos, choreography. And I think, yes, in connection with the European theater tradition, um, I think like theater is very different all over the Europe. I think, I don't know, maybe Germany is more Brechtian, is post-dramatic theater in um, Romania or Hungary, it's there for world theater. Uh, so I think it's a very general question and I don't know how, how to focus on it. But yes, I think we also practice post-dramatic theater many times. And uh, I think if we also speak about the Roma theater tradition here in... Um, uh, in Romania, it's it's a long tradition because like Roma people, since slavery, they used to be involved in theater and they put the basis of the first forms of theater in the Romanian countries before we called this space Romania. And they used a lot of music because they were also musicians, like the enslaved people were musicians. And they said also a lot of jokes and used circus and I feel yes, somehow we bring this tradition forward. I mean, there is a perspective in there. Uh, but in general, I think as um, Sebastian also said, like I think because we are pioneers, like independent theater Hungary in Budapest, they in Rome, we in Romania, we are pioneers of Roma contemporary theater. We experiment a lot. Uh, so I think, I don't know, maybe, Five years ago, after 15 years of Roma contemporary theater, someone will, uh, I don't know, will write a book and will have more reflection on what we managed to build differently in our countries and, you know, what we put it together. But I, I really think, like, we're not having the opportunities to have, uh, to have a building to call it Roma theater, you know? So... Uh, us performing in different spaces, in different alternative spaces, theaters. This uh, also influenced our art practice in the way in which we had to adapt to the spaces. This is why many times maybe our theater is experimental or, um, uh, yeah, I wanted to say something else, but I forgot my idea. If I remember, I'll come back. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. Yeah, sorry, can I just uh, add a little thing? Yes, sure. yes, please. Yeah, no, just because I, 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 maybe I left some part of the of the answer out, and, and um, more than the tradition, I think that uh, uh, what uh, has moved a lot uh, here, the company we work with, it's more a mood, mood of the of the Roma community in the positive and the, and the negative way. This is what uh, uh, is, is a very strong, uh, it, it gives, gives ideas and it gives, uh, uh, gives uh, wanting to tell through the theater and not so much uh, uh, about the tradition or the style of, of, of whatever, but more the mood of the community. This is what, uh, what is giving us uh, 
uh, it gives us contents to talk about. Ugye nálam, nálam mindhárom alkotásból bekerült a családomnak a története valamilyen szinten. So, uh, in all the three uh, pieces I did in this uh, trilogy, uh, have some parts from the story of my family. De nem állítom azt, hogy, ez, hogy ezek tradicionális történetek lennének, vagy bármilyen szinten kötődnek. But I wouldn't say that these stories are traditional or they are connected to any kinds of traditions. Egyetemes színháztorit tanultam a színiskolába, és ez ez tudtam visszanyúlni. I, I studied universal uh, theater history in the theater school, so that was what I could have uh, referred to. És igen, dolgoztam opera előadásokban, amiket nagyon, nagyon unalmasnak tartottam. And I also worked in opera uh, productions, which I uh, used to think that they were very boring. Húsz év elteltével uh, elkezdett sejtésem lenni arról, hogy mitől lehetne egy pizivel izgalmasabb, mint egyébként. And after 20 years I started to think about how it could be a bit more interesting than when I was only an actor in a production. But we were only having fun uh, with each other and other colleagues when these ideas came up. But actually, you also say that you had a relation with the genre of opera, which is actually a tradition. Which relation was that it's boring and you have to re reinvent it and innovate it. And I think each of you actually, uh, as contemporary artists, just reflect on traditions and innovate them. And uh, just getting back to Mihaela a little bit, um, yeah, maybe um, this question sounded a bit general, but what I meant was that for you, for example, I think in your contemporary theater, Uh, one can really see uh, how you are based in two countries and how German theater, for example, and um, how you perform in Gorky and how uh, these different languages just mix in your personal tone. So um, I was just interested in how you interpret your own, what, what, what you are really interested in your artistic work in, in which directions and traditions. But you are right that it will be the task of theater scholars to um, write this down later on. Okay, so getting back uh, closer to the end of this conversation, um, actually uh, there was a manifesto um, in 2022, which I would like you to reflect on a little bit. Uh, when uh, the representatives of the European Roma Theatre Network came to Budapest and they shared their vision about the future and they had a declaration. And um, this, this declaration is about uh, visibility, the, the demand of visibility, support and equal op opportunities for the Roma artists. So at the end of this conversation, I would like to reflect you on, um, on this manifesto or declaration and um, My question is, what do you think we should do to make this actually happen? Because these are nice words, um, but what should we actually do? Uh, sorry, what is the question? Like, I didn't, I didn't get it. I don't know if they get it because I saw that there is a little bit of silence. Uh, yeah, that's... Mm -hmm. The, you want to answer the question now. is uh, that there is this manifesto um the manifesto is, yeah, yeah. yeah the manifesto that yeah. we signed regarding the european uh, roma theater yeah okay now i got it uh and what okay. what do we want to achieve in the future yeah like, i mean the means and the tools and and what should we actually do to make this actually happen mm -hmm. sooner than that Yeah, I think the fact that we still resist in theater and we still produce as independent theater companies fighting with budgets, with funding, writing application, trying to make 
visible our art producing and being creative at the same time you know it's it's already the fact that we we are here we resist and we are we are committed to do this work in the future too and maybe you know the future roma generations of theater makers they don't have to fight so much as we have done all these years and regarding the tradition that you asked uh us maybe like we'll also leave them a tradition of roma theater that they will continue because as we are pioneers in roma contemporary theater and you know we'll have already our our style our themes content uh and um, yeah we really hope that we will leave this platform so the next generation of theater makers they will not feel that they have to take it from the beginning if we manage to do this i think we already have done a lot <laughs> it's it's enough for me <laughs> Mihaela, you you make me wanting to become old i see us like old people meeting on Zoom and telling each other, do you remember when you were young and I did that with the But we are proposal. still young, we are still young, <laughs> but we've done a lot of work, you know, yeah, like yeah, our work, yeah, is, yeah, only yeah. our work, work is... Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but I, I'm sorry. joking, I, I'm joking, I'm joking. Uh, of course, you know, I, I am a clown. Uh, yeah, well, uh, we did this uh, beautiful uh, manifesto last year. Was it last year? Oh, now it's two years ago. Did we? Did they react? I'm asking Martin and Rodrigo. Did they react? Did Did we have any response from? Uh, there was even the head of the culture office, European culture office, that day. Don't you remember? Did we ever have any response? Uh, yeah, we got like a new uh, Creative Euro project. That's what we got since then, <laughs> which ah. is closing the <laughs> online event of this project, uh, Diverse Roma Theatres in Theatre and uh, Everyday Life. But we didn't do like a really lobbying activity. So, and I don't know if it's really like the task which also this very small and grassroots theater group should do like going to brussels and taking coffees and you know like uh, uh lobbying uh ministers and and uh things like this so no actually it's a it's a base but maybe we could involve some more lobbying uh roma organizations to to stand next to this initiative and to work on that yeah. so i to respond i totally agree with uh, Mihaela. produce produce create create every year try to go on with our own means uh, what whatever it's the only way we can get some some recon recognition recognition and uh, yeah, well, on, on, on that side, I don't know, uh, uh, there is this um, new movement, it's called Roma for Democracy. We have been contacted by them and somebody told us uh, uh, politic and culture has to walk together. So maybe we can send them to, Br to Brussels do some lo mobbing, uh, lobbying, sorry. <laughs> so already made sense to talk. <laughs> there are some new ideas. Interesting. Yeah, that, 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 hogy amit, amit Mihaila mondott, azt szerintem nagyon-nagyon helyén valaki. Persze az is, amit Sebastiano, de hogy igen, szerintem, hogyha foglalkozunk a saját közösségünkkel, és, és igen, azt csináljuk, ami a dolgunk, tehát kvázi szellemi táplálékot adni a számukra, hogy higgyék el, hogy ők is valami, valakik is, hogy alakíthatják a jövőjüket. 
Okay, so I totally agree with uh, Mihail and Sebastiano that we should really focus on our work. And if we uh, do this uh, work and create uh, new performances and empower the community uh, members who can believe that they can really shape their futures and and uh, make decisions and igen és hogy és azt gondolom hogy ez hogy ez önmagában véve nem kevés nem beszélve arról hogy hogy azért ne gondoljuk azt hogy mi vagyunk a, a, az utolsók tehát hogy hogy azért igen jön utánunk egy következő generáció, és azután is jön egy, és azután is jön egy, és hogy igen, nagy valószínűséggel lesznek majd olyan színházak, vagy színházi társulatok, akik hasonlóan fontosnak tartják roma emberek értékeinek a megmutatását. Szerintem nagyon-nagyon fontos, hogy, hogy, hogy ők már tudnak mihez nyúlni, amit Mihályla is mondott egyébként. So... Uh, this is already enough. I, I also agree. And also that there will be other generations coming and new theater companies and they will have all, already uh, something to, uh, to find. Well, és, és igen, amit, amit visszatérve egy kicsit a közösségre, szerintem, hogyha, hogyha, hogyha a közösséget tényleg, tényleg elviszi és a gyakorlatban visszaigazolni látja, azt, hogy igenis juthat egyről a kettőre, mondjuk akár egy előadásod megtekintése után, akkor, akkor az a közösség téged fenn fog tartani, és ahhoz nem kellenek sem EU-s, sem hazai szinten politikusok, hanem egyszerűen a közösség fog téged működtetni. And I think if you show the uh, opportunities of your community that they can really develop, be active and so on, then your own community will be your supporters and uh, you wouldn't really need external supports from European Union or something like upper and external. Én hiszek a Magyarország Roma közösségben és, és látom azt az összetartó erőt, ami, ami jelenleg uh, munkálkodik a közösségeinkbe, és, uh, és csodálattal tölt el. I believe in the Hungarian Roma communities, and uh, I really see how a lot of people are trying to connect and have put energies, and I really admire this uh, people, community and process. Thank you. Thank you so much for all of you for sharing all your ideas and and thoughts and even some practical ideas came up at the end by Sebastiano. So I would like to thank you for this conversation today. And if um, there is nothing in you that you really want to tell them, um, I would say goodbye to both of to you and to the audience of all around. <laughs>